Hey everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be ranking, again, another tier ranking video, but today I'm going to be ranking all the fantasy books that I've read. These videos are going to keep on coming. I have one more plan to film and then I might do another one. Let's be honest, I probably will. Kind of depends on how many I have to rank for that video. But so far I have done series, I've done my top 20 favorite books of all time, and now I'm doing fantasy today. And then the other one that I have planned is contemporary and then maybe historical fiction after that. But today we're focusing on fantasy. I have 83 titles inputted into the little thingy there and I think that I got all of them. So if it was a series, I only included the first book. And I don't think there's anything else that I had to say. Like fantasy is pretty straightforward. So let's just get into the ranking video. I like love these, but I hate them because they're really difficult for me, but they're also a lot of fun to do. Yeah, I don't know why I'm torturing myself, but hey, whatever. I hope you guys like it. So the fantasies on here are a mix of high fantasy, urban fantasy, low fantasy, a little bit of everything to be honest, but anything that I categorized as fantasy on my Goodreads shelf. So we have so many books to get through. The crop for this screen recording is probably going to be a little bit weird and I apologize for that, but we're doing the best we can. First, Land of Stories by Chris Colfer. This one did I conclude that in my series? I don't think I did, no. But this I would say goes in the good tier. I really enjoyed it. I only read the first book though. I didn't feel compelled enough to continue, but it is a really fun story, a great middle grade fantasy retelling that has to do with a lot of fairy tales. Splintered by A.G. Howard is an interesting one because I do have that kind of nostalgic connection to it. Not even nostalgic, but it's an Alice in Wonderland retelling and I love that aspect of it, but I think apart from the Alice in Wonderland retelling, it would definitely fall into the okay tier, but I'm gonna put it in the good tier just because personally, I didn't really enjoy it as a retelling. Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. This, once again, I would put in the good tier. It's one where I liked the first book a lot, but didn't feel connected enough to the characters to continue. And honestly, I think too much time had passed by the time I was like, maybe I should read more of this. So I just never ended up reading more. The Night Circus by Erin Morgan. Stern, this one. I just, I feel really bad doing this to Hannah, but I'm going to put it in the bad tier, not the trash tier, because I don't think it's the lowest of the low. It's just a book that I so wish I had loved and enjoyed more than I actually did. Like, I tried reading this book twice because I wanted so badly to love it, but I just couldn't get my head around the writing and it just didn't mesh with me very well, unfortunately. I actually have started the Starless Sea audiobook and I seem to be enjoying that so far, but that could change. By the time you see this video, you'll probably know how I ended up feeling about that one. Vicious by V.E. Schwab, that's going to go in the good tier. Really great story about good versus evil. That's something that I think V.E. Schwab does very well. And yeah, I never actually read Vicious though, or no, not Vicious. I just said vicious. What's the other one called? Vengeful. That was a sequel that came out way later. It came out last year, whereas Vicious came out years before. I'm not exactly sure when, but I have no interest really in reading Vengeful, to be honest. I'm not a big fan of when a series is done or like a standalone is done and then they add more after. I don't know why. Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard. I'm gonna put that in the okay tier. I don't know why, like Rick Riordan, I think he, ha I just said his name really weird, but I think he has great writing. He writes characters fantastically. I just don't think that I was young enough when I read it to really enjoy it and appreciate it, unfortunately, because I do think that they're great stories, but I just never really felt compelled to continue with his series. I felt like I was kind of forcing myself a little bit and I never want that. It's not that they're bad, just not really my taste. The Scorpio Races by Maggie Steve Otter is a book I always forget about, to be honest. That one I'm gonna put in the okay tier as well. Nothing wrong with it. It just kind of falls, like okay to me is kind of the average tier. So I don't remember it basically at all, but that's not really like a bad thing. I don't remember having strong feelings about it either way. Cruel Beauty by Rosamund Hodge. This one is gonna go in the okay tier. It's one where I was kind of confused at the beginning, but then as I got further into it, I started to enjoy the story a little bit more, but 
I still did have quite a few issues with it and I think it was like a solid read. The Winner's Curse by Marie Rukowski I'm gonna put in the trash tier. I didn't care for that book pretty much at all. I am interested in the author still but that series was very hyped up and I just had quite a few issues with it and never ended up going past the first book because of that even though they have like the most beautiful covers. I love them so much. A Court of Thorns and Roses I'm gonna put in the demigod tier. I do love that series. I know it's kind of controversial, all Sarah J Mass is, but like personally, I really enjoy it. It's a fantasy romance, fae, all that stuff, and I think it's great. That's not to say I don't recognize that her work does have its issues. The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. I feel like this one is once again okay tier, but I feel like it's kind of more bad tier because I don't remember it at all, and it doesn't stand out to me, and that just to me like I could not tell you what that book is about to be honest so I think that's why I would put it in bad tier. Maybe I should have made an extra tier where it's like I totally forgot this existed and forgot everything about it. Talon by Julie Kagawa I'm gonna put in the trash tier. That was a story that I felt like had so much potential and I really wanted to love it. It's about dragons but it's people can like shapeshift into dragons and I felt like it had that plot line but didn't go anywhere with it. Harry Potter is going to go in god tier, the first book for god tier, yay! But I just, I said this before in my top 20 books video, Harry Potter is just a series that I feel like I'm coming home every time I'm reading it and it just gives you a feeling when you read it. And I think that's something that many readers of that series can identify with, so it just, I feel like it belongs there. Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Rosh, I'm gonna put in the good tier. I think I did that. I'm gonna be interested in seeing when I'm editing my series versus my fantasy ranking to see if it kind of matched up because I feel like I changed my opinions like that, which is a problem, but you know, I'm indecisive. But it was a solid fantasy sort of romance series once again. I loved the world and I think that I did love it a little bit more when I first read it than I would if I reread it now, but I do have fond memories of it. The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. That one's gonna go in the good tier, but kind of bordering on the great tier. I think that I would be able to make a better educated decision once I do continue with that series, but the next books, like the second one isn't that big, but the third one is super big, but I don't want to let that stop me because I do actually really want to get to that book eventually. The Kiss of Deception though is a book that I do recommend pretty frequently because I think it's a lot of fun. I love the idea of the mystery surrounding it where it's a princess who ran off and she ran off on the day of her wedding and one guy who's following her is the assassin who was sent to kill her and then the other guy is the prince she was supposed to marry. So you're trying to guess along the way and that's fun. Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This one, I feel like in terms of this list, like each list is kind of different context. So this one I'm gonna put in the God tier. This is kind of a situation once again where it does hold a special place in my heart because it is an Alice in Wonderland retelling, but it's my favorite one. I think it stays true to the own story while adding its own twist and no, to, true to the original story while adding its own twist. I can't speak today. The Queen of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. This is gonna be okay tier. Once again, don't really remember what happened in it. I have a terrible memory when it comes to books in general, like even books that I've read recently, a lot of times I'm like, I don't know who the characters are and that's just who I am. I have a terrible memory when it comes to everything, but the Queen of the Tearling I feel like is one that I should maybe reread because I think that I might like it more now for whatever reason. She says as she struggles with fantasy now. I don't know. The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adie. I'm gonna put in the good tier. I loved that book when it first came out, but thinking back on it, I don't think it was as amazing as I thought it was. I think it was a solid fantasy once again, and that's why good tier is where it belongs. It didn't disappoint me, but it also didn't entirely blow me away either. The great tier is sad. Why don't I put anything in the great tier? <laughs> Serafina by Rachel Hartman. This is going to go in the trash tier. Kind of similar to Talon. 
I had really high hopes for Serafina. I wanted to love it, but I felt like it had the dragon plot line and it didn't really do anything with it. Number in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. This one I will put in the great tier. It is one of my favorite books. Love that series. Love the Roman Empire-esque world and how brutal it is. And I think it is great. The Iron Trial by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. This I'm going to put in the okay tier. It kind of, I feel like, should be in between the good and the okay tier because I don't think it's a book that I forget about because it did kind of break convention a little bit, which I enjoyed, but I did have my issues with it. So I feel like okay is where it belongs. The Young Elites by Marie Lu. This one I'm going to put in the okay tier as well. It was just like kind of, I don't know, an average story. I think that's a lot of the reason why fantasy has been a struggle for me is because I felt like I was reading so many average ones and it just got boring after a while. So I'm still trying to like get back into the mindset of not every fantasy is the same, not all of them are going to be boring, and it's just it's taken time. Magonia by Maria Devona Headley I believe is the author. I can't see it on here but this okay tier. This came out and like I was blown away by the cover and that's why I picked it up and it was a good book. It had a really super unique concept where there's like illness that comes into it if I remember correctly and there's like a world that exists in the clouds so definitely very different but I never picked up the sequel and I think I was okay with just the one book. Not that that's a bad thing, but I feel like that kind of justifies a little bit why it's in the okay tier. A Darker Shade of Magic by Victoria Schwab. Is that Victoria Schwab or V.E. Schwab for this one? It's V.E. Schwab, sorry. But this I'm going to put in the okay tier. It's a story that I don't remember, to be honest, and one that I want to give a second chance because I feel like the first time I read it I was kind of like, okay, this is fine, but I think if I really paid attention and dedicated more time to it, because I listened to the audiobook and I think it may have just been one of those books that the audiobook wasn't the way to go for me, so I would be willing to give it a second chance and physically read it. A Book of Spirits and Thieves by Morgan Rhodes. This one's gonna go in the great tier, so it kind of ties into Falling Kingdoms, but A Book of Spirits and Thieves I liked a little bit more. It was more of an urban fantasy because you got real life Toronto, which was really cool because I've never read anything set in Toronto. So I liked that. And I loved the fact that it was kind of the secret society thing going on. I did have the second book, but I ended up unhauling it because they're not going to finish this series anyways. They're not going to finish publishing it, which makes me sad because I did really like the first book. I thought it was great, but Oh well. A Shadow Bright and Burning by Jessica Clues. This is gonna go in the trash tier. I wanted to like this a lot and it kind of was like Victoria and Harry Potter. Ooh, but it was a letdown overall and just didn't do it for me. Three Dark Crowns by Kendara Blake. This is one of those cases where concept does not meet execution for me and I think that I kept on giving the series chances because I liked the concept so much but it would go in the bad tier for me. I was bored the whole way through so yeah. Flame in the Mist by Renee Adier. This one I think is trash tier as well. It just, I wanted it to be a Mulan retelling, which I fault the fact that it was marketed as such, even though it's not. So when I actually read it, I felt like kind of gypped. I didn't feel like I got what I signed up for and what I got, I also didn't really care for that much. Hunted by Megan Spooner. This will go in the good tier. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and I think it was a really great Beauty and the Beast retelling. I've read quite a few because there's a lot out there but I still consider that one one of my favorites. Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. Okay tier. Doesn't stand out to me. You know it was like a solid read. I'm not mad that I've read it but would I ever read it again? Probably not. Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Coldhurst. This one is going to go, I feel like I want it somewhere in between the good and the great tier, but I'm gonna put it in the good tier. It was a really fun lesbian romance where the princess is supposed to marry a prince and then she ends up running off and falling in love with the prince's sister instead. And so adorable. So I did thoroughly enjoy that story. The Star Touched Queen by Roshni Chakshi. This I'm going to put in the bad tier. I'm kind of between bad and okay with this one, but I think that it 
featured a lot of purple prose that disguised the fact that there wasn't a lot going on in the story and that just doesn't really sit with me. I don't know. Every Heart a Doorway by Shauna McGuire I'm gonna put in the bad tier as well. I do continue with this series because they're really short and they boost up my Goodreads goal and also I'm so in love with the concept and I just want it to turn around but we're five books in and it's not happening for me. I don't know why I keep on thinking it's gonna happen but I keep on going. The Siren by Kira Cass. This goes in the trash tier. I loved the selection when I first read it. I don't know how I would feel about it now. Kind of want to reread it and see how that would end up. But The Siren I read because I enjoyed her first series so much, but The Siren I did not like. Like <laughs> I tried, but I don't know. It just didn't do it for me. The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I put this somewhere in between the good tier and the okay tier, to be honest, but I'll stick with the good tier because I don't think there's anything wrong with the story. I just think that I consider it lower in my mind because I don't enjoy it as much as everyone else does. This is a series that has a really hardcore fan base for it and I don't feel that passionate about it so I think that's why I kind of dismiss it a little bit in my mind whenever I think about it because in comparison it feels like an okay book to me compared to what everyone else feels about it. Queen of Hearts by Colleen Oaks. This one I would put in the good tier. An Alice in Wonderland retelling once again, so bear that in mind. But it is definitely one where I have the other two books in the trilogy and I would like to complete the trilogy because I think it did feature an interesting twist on the original Alice story. The Crown's Game by Evelyn Skye. This I'll put in the great tier. This is a book that like I wish more people knew about and I wish people read more because I think it's everything that I wanted the Night Circus to be, which like I feel really bad saying. They have a similar concept with the sort of magical competition, but I was so much more engaged in the Crown's game and just felt more connected to the character. So I enjoyed it a lot more. Trials of Apollo, like I said, Rick Riordan and I just like or don't mix that well, that's not the bad tier, that's okay tier. So I don't think there's anything wrong with it, it's just my personal taste. Even the Darkest Stars by, oh, Heather Fawcett. This is like a quiz if I can remember authors, but this is bad tier. I loved the cover for it. Actually, maybe it's okay tier, but I'm gonna stick it in the bad tier still because I don't really remember it. And I think once again, its concept doesn't like follow through in the execution because I loved the idea of exploration and her mapping these things in a fantastical setting. That just sounded so cool to me, but it was just kind of boring. The cover is beautiful, but unfortunately I didn't like the inside as much. Char of All by Stephanie Garber. This one I'm going to put in the great tier. I love the Char of All world. It's a lot of fun to be in that mysterious game setting and it keeps you guessing and it's something that's really easy to escape into. I love the sister relationship that's exhibited in it as well and I think it's great. Demigod tier and god tier are so sad right now. <laughs> Labyrinth Lost by Zariah Cordova. I'm gonna put in trash here. I never really got into that story and like I don't know I I'm hesitant to put it in trash here because I don't think it's terrible but I just didn't really care for it at all personally. Furthermore by Tahara Mafi. I'm gonna put in the great tier. I loved the world of Furthermore. I thought it was a really beautifully written middle grade story and it was very Wonderland-esque. It helped me to escape into this world of color and magic and it was so much fun. Ever the Hunted by... who is this by again? Erin Summerill. <laughs> so this one I'm gonna put in the okay tier. I think it pretty much followed the typical sort of quest narrative. It did take place in a forest though which was cool and had a couple of twists but I don't think it was enough to bring it to that higher level for me. Renegades by Marissa Meyer. This one will go in the good tier. It's once again kind of a good versus evil thing, superhero versus villain, and it was a lot of fun to read. I still have to read Arch Enemies though. Isn't, what's the Supernova's the last book? I forgot about that one too. The Queen of Blood by Sarah Beth Durst. That's great tier. I still have to finish that series too. I have both books in the trilogy and I have been meaning to get to them for a long time now and hopefully I will soon but this is actually an adult fantasy. Beautiful world it deals with spirits and it's kind of like a more natural fantasy if that makes sense which is one of the reasons why I really enjoyed it. Roseblood by A.G. Howard definitely trashed here. I don't even remember. No I did finish it. It's a Phantom of the Opera retelling and I had no familiarity with Phantom of the Opera and now I have seen it performed and I'm still kind of confused about the story. I didn't really enjoy it that much but this book like confused me first. <laughs> Just 
I don't know. I didn't like it. Roar by Cora Carmack. I'm gonna put in bad. Like, I can't remember a thing of what that book is about, to be honest. Like, how bad is that? Lost in a book, the Beauty and the Beast thing. What's it called? Who's it by? Jennifer Donnelly. This I'll put in the okay tier. I don't think there's anything wrong with this story. I do think it was an interesting addition to the Beauty and the Beast, especially like it's kind of set during the live action movie and it deals with something that you see in there, but it goes further into it. And that was an interesting thing about it, but I don't know. Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foodie, I'm gonna put in great tier as well. I really thoroughly enjoyed that story and the twist it took on ghosts and illusions and a circus. It was just super cool and really fun. But it was also creepy and dark at the same time, so an interesting mix there. Ace of Shades by Amanda Foodi. This one I would put in the good tier. I didn't enjoy it quite as much as Daughter of the Burning City, but I did like that it was kind of a gritty, fantastical version of Las Vegas. And then you have this girl who has been in finishing school, so she's like learning to be a proper young lady, and then she's thrown into that gritty Las Vegas-esque world, which was very interesting to read about. Valiant by Lizzie Living this one will go in great tier as well. Actually, mm, I, I'm kind of wishing here that I had an in between a great and good tier, but I feel like good tier is actually a solid place for it to go. It's a fun sort of historical fantasy and you deal with gladiators, but female gladiators and it was just a great read and I hadn't really read anything like that before. However, I will say, and I think part of it is because I waited too long to continue, but I ended up unhauling the other books in the series because I never got around to them on time. Long May She Reign by Rhiannon Thomas. This one I'm going to put in the good tier as well. I kind of hesitate to mark it as a fantasy. It is a fantasy, but there's not really any magical elements to it. The only thing that really sets it apart as a fantasy is the fictional fantastical world that it's set in, but it doesn't really have any of those elements of like supernatural or anything like that that would, I don't know, push it to another level of being fantasy. That reminds me, I didn't include any paranormal anything like that in here. Spindle Fire by Lexa Hillier. That's what I'm going to put in the bad tier. It's a Sleeping Beauty retelling that I wish was better than it was. An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. This one I think I would put in the great tier. I did enjoy it. I liked the take that it took on Faye. I think it has a beautiful world associated with it as well. And it was a super quick read too, which was a lot of fun and a nice change for a fantasy. And it's a standalone, which you like never see with fantasies. The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. Okay tier. Like, I don't know. It just never really did that much for me and it might be another situation of how old I was when I read it. The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale I'm gonna put in the demigod tier. It's kind of in between a demigod tier and god tier for me but I think demigod is a solid place for it to go throughout the whole series. I loved all of the books and I loved some more than others but I think overall demigod is probably a good place for it to go. I don't really remember where I put it for my series ranking video so that will be interesting. Also I'm being so decisive today I don't have that many more books left but like I'm like just going through these. Witchwood by Tahara Mafi is next and this one I would put in the good tier. I didn't enjoy it quite as much as Furthermore but it did still have a really cool world and an interesting character and yeah I don't really have that much else to say about it. Everless by Sarah Holland. This is an okay pretty average fantasy. It deals with time as currency which was an interesting twist but I think once again it was pretty formulaic. The Bird in the Blade by oh I can't even I can't remember who this is by I'm sorry but this one put in the good tier. I actually don't really talk about that book that much but I did like it a lot more than I was expecting to and I kind of forgot that I read it until like I was putting together my list for this video and I was like oh yeah I forgot about that one. I should recommend it more. Girls Made of Snow and Glass by Melissa Boschardoust. This one is going to go in good tier as well. This is a Snow White retelling and it was very feminist and diverse and it was I don't know a solid Snow White retelling. I'm so bad at explaining these books. I don't know if it's because it's two in the morning, but I'm sorry. I'm not good at like explaining my feelings about a book without one, pre-written notes, and two, 
getting into the nitty gritty of it. I struggle to explain why I enjoy books after it's been a while since I've read them and if I don't have passionate feelings either way about them I find it so hard to not like in the moment give a review of it which is like terrible as a booktuber but a lot of the books that I read since I do read a fair amount I kind of forget about and I'm just kind of like meh and because I read so much I put those ones out of my mind and I try and just remember the ones that I either really really hate or the ones that I really really love. Daughter of the Pirate King, that one will go in good tier. This is kind of one where I wish there was an in-between good and great because I did think this was a really fun and sexy fantasy story and it took me by surprise and I enjoyed the journey. Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow is also good tier for me. It is a look at the evil queen myth and I loved taking a look at that and it also heavily features Asian mythology which was super cool. Also I should put it on that side. I don't know why I put it on the other side but Fury Born by Claire Legrand. This one I think good tier as well. I like part of me kind of wants to continue with that series. I did technically unhaul the sequel but I actually haven't put that video out yet but spoilers I did but it's actually downstairs so I still could give it another go. It's like an epic high fantasy but you follow two queens in different time periods but they both affect each other and I just think that concept's cool but I don't know if it's I love the concept more and that made me read the book kind of through rose-colored glasses or if I did really enjoy it and I would like the sequel. Maybe I'll give it a go. To Kill a Kingdom by Alexander Christo. This is good tier as well. You see what I'm talking about with those like average but like good solid fantasies. It's like, I don't know. I just feel like nothing was blowing me out of the water and that's why I'm like struggles with fantasy. Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I kept on wanting to say Tahara Mafi because they kind of, they don't sound the same at all but like it's a T and then they both end in an I and anyways. This book was super hyped up and I think when I first read it the hype is a lot of the reason why I liked it so much but I think if I'm being honest with myself I didn't enjoy it as much as other fantasies. I think once again it was very formulaic and there's nothing wrong with that. I did like how diverse it was and I did enjoy it but I don't think it's great tier. I think this is definitely a good tier, solid fantasy, a good read and I don't regret reading it at all and I will still probably read the sequel but I don't think that I was as blown away as I expected to be. I'm sorry I had to scroll down and cut off the demigod tier and god tier because I ran out of room again because this is a big list and the contemporary list is even bigger so that's gonna be fun. But The Queen's Rising by Rebecca Ross. This will be trash tier trash tier just sounds so harsh like they're not trash books they just weren't for me but the queen's rising i wanted to love it has like a school and different specialties that the characters have but i don't really remember exactly how it worked and that kind of I don't know. In that way, I think it was a letdown. The Traitor's Game by Jennifer A. Nielsen. This, I think, is a great starter fantasy. I would put it in the okay tier, but I kind of wish that there was a tier in between okay and good for this one because I think that would be a solid spot for it. Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. This I'm going to put in the great tier. I don't think that I love it as much. Do I not have Six of Crows on here? Oh, I don't. What the heck? Okay, so that's dumb. So I'm just gonna put Shadow and Bone as demigod. No, I'm gonna put Shadow and Bone as god in Six of Crows place. <laughs> I don't know how I forgot Six of Crows. I mean inevitably I was going to forget a couple of books but I don't know how that's one of the ones that I forgot. Moving on, Circle of Shadows by Evelyn Skye. This one I would put in good tier. I didn't enjoy it as much as the Crown game, Crowns game but I do still think it had an interesting concept and I don't think I'm going to continue with the series though. Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller I would put in good tier. It wasn't, I don't know, it didn't like blow me away but it was really fun to read. It's a survivalist sort of fantasy and that is something I hadn't really explored before so I did like it. King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. This one I'm going to put in the demigod tier. I think it was risky but like I feel personally like the risks paid off. I know there's a lot of people who read that book and were a little bit disappointed by it but personally I enjoyed it and I'm very much looking forward to the sequel. A Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney I'm gonna put in the bad tier like 
No, actually, I'm going to put it in the okay tier. Doesn't stand out to me. It's an Alice in Wonderland retelling once again, and I did like certain things that it did, but I think overall, I just kind of was like, it feels a bit average. A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kamurmur, I'm going to put in the bad tier. I feel like this is at the lower end of the bad tier, but there were things that I liked, but most of it, it was a Beauty and the Beast retelling once again, and I just was really confused. There was a lot going on, but then it was also super boring at the same time, so it was an interesting combination. The Gilded Wolves by Rashmi Chakshi, I didn't even finish. That goes in the trash tier. I did not get very far into it. Didn't like the writing, didn't like the characters, didn't like anything about it. I'm sorry, that was harsh, but it is what it is. Serpent and Dove by, who is it? Shelby McEwerin. This one I'm going to put in the bad tier as well. I know so many people loved that book, but it just did not do it for me. And I really wanted to love it because it sounded super good, like witches and also the one character has my last name and just the tension, but like it, yeah, I don't know. I was definitely disappointed by that one. Wicked Fox by Cat Cho was another disappointment for me. That goes in trash here. We read that for bookmarked and I didn't like it at all. It was just, I don't know, not what I was expecting and not in a good way. Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson was actually another bookmarked book, but this one I would say goes in the good tier. It was great and in terms of the world, but it was pretty formulaic, but I do think that it did a good job with that formula. Eon by Alison Goodman, okay. Like it was fine. I'm gonna hate myself while editing this, but it is so weird to try and describe something that like I have such a different feelings about. The Lost Hero by Rick Riordan, same thing, another Rick Riordan. Pretty much after was Trials of Apollo or Magnus Chase. Either one of those, after I read that, I stopped pre-ordering his books and I stopped and I was kind of like, okay, I think these aren't for me and I kind of came to accept that finally. Entwined by Heather Dixon is a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling and this one I would put in the good tier, kind of bordering on the great tier. I think it was a solid retelling that surprised me in a good way. Daughter of Smoke and Bone, I will put in good tier. Lainey Taylor is someone who like I wish I could love her stories but they always just kind of fall either somewhere lower. Why isn't Strange the Dreamer in here? I miss so many books. Okay well Strange the Dreamer should also be on here. That would unfortunately go in trash tier for me. I wanted to love it so much. I want to love her books. Her writing is absolutely beautiful but they never click with me. I just feel bored and I can't get myself to fall in love with the characters and the world like I feel like I should be. So pretend it's there, but whatever it's called, I just completely forgot. All I can think of is Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Strange the Dreamer. Strange the Dreamer would be in trash tier. Daughter of Smoke and Bone belongs in good tier. I never continue with that series though as well because I just didn't feel invested enough. Incarnate by Jodie Meadows. This one will go in good tier. A super interesting concept of the same people reincarnating all the time and then all of a sudden there's this new soul and they're like what? Because it's been like millions of years and I think it was unlike anything I've ever read before couple of issues with it, but it was a solid read. And finally, Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevers. This one I would also put in good tier. Solid read, none assassins, all that fun stuff. So those are all my fantasies here. That's the ranking. As you can see, most of it falls toward the bottom. It's a pretty bottom heavy list. And I think that's probably a lot of the reason why I've been struggling with fantasy so much is because so much of it is near the bottom, like in okay tier, but mostly good tier. And good tier, there's nothing wrong with that. I think good tier is a great place for a lot of these books to be. I'm okay with that being a really big portion of it, but I do wish that there was a little bit more above that as well. But I think that a lot of the stuff that I've read in terms of fantasy, I found forgettable because a lot of it has been the same. And I'm just like looking for something new and interesting that's going to blow my mind, but I haven't quite found it yet. I do have a lot of it on my TBR, but I think I'm hesitant to read it because I had read so many average and not that great ones in a row that it hasn't motivated me to want to pick up a fantastical book, but I'm hoping I will get out of that soon because it is a genre that I really love. So that's actually going to be all for today's tier ranking video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I apologize that it was kind of hard for me to be coherent about it, but I did try my best, I promise. I hope you guys still enjoyed the video nonetheless, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!